السلام عليكم ورحمة الله الحمد لله رب العالمين الصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين All praises due to Allah and may Allah's peace and blessings be upon his final messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Inshallah today we'll be starting chapter noon and inshallah if we finish it while understanding the meanings and the principles in it, inshallah, it will be sufficient because we have to concentrate on some important things here. And subhanAllah, this chapter, again, it has important scientific principles, matters in usul al-tafsir, principles of tafsir, matters regarding creed, aqidah, and subhanAllah, general matters regarding uh, sciences of the Quran plus the admonitions and the stories in it and the benefits. This is why, subhanAllah, studying the Qur'an, they say, what are the sciences needed to study the Qur'an? Is fundamentals of tafsir enough? No. A mufassir, a person who comes and tries to interpret the Qur'an, basically he's, he needs to be a mujtahid. He needs to have all of the sciences, the understanding, the high understanding of the Arabic language, understanding of the hadith, See, what does understanding of the hadith has to do with understanding the Qur'an? You will see an example here, a verse where you cannot interpret unless you have understood or came across the hadith that mentions this verse. And also understanding on, having an understanding on how to deal with the statements of the early scholars, basically the Salaf. So the more that you have, the more sciences you hold, the better your understanding of the verse. So you have a basic understanding. And those who have more sciences, more knowledge of the other sciences of Islam, they have a better understanding. And obviously a person who has even a higher understanding, he has even, subhanAllah, a deeper understanding. And this is part of why this Qur'an is from Allah. When I recite some verses, the basic understanding is even those, alhamdulillah, young shaykh that we have, they understand this. And once we go a bit deeper, some people understand. Once you go a bit deeper, those who have some uh, background information regarding Sunnah and other sciences of Islam, they have this, they start to understand more. So the Quran is for all levels. You don't need to be a scholar to understand the Quran. Some verses can be understood by everyone. That's why the Quran is directed to who? Not to the scholars only, to the basic Muslims. But certain verses, that need explanation, yes, we go back to the scholars and see what they say. Okay, this chapter starts with the letter Noon. Noon wal qalami wa ma yasturun. Now, when I hear from you, when you find this letter Noon, it is similar to other chapters of the Quran. Yeah, Qaf. Yeah, other chapters, Alif, Lam, Mim, Qasim, Hamim. Yeah, so. What does this mean? What do you guys know? I want to hear, yeah? Wait, wait, no, oh no. Okay, let me ask, yes. Okay, you're going to be saying the same thing, yeah? So you're basically saying what they say is a mutashabah kulli, meaning no one understands, but Allah. What, do you have an opinion? What do you think? Does Nobody any... knows the of this. Huh? Nobody knows. Anyone? Yes? Look, he, he, okay, good. See, he's... Huh? He highlights the, the main motive of Quran. Okay. See, the brother here said something very important because you guys said it's mutashabih kulli, as the brother said. Mutashabih kulli means something that nobody will know except Allah. Okay. Where did we get this? That there is something in the Quran that nobody knows except Allah? This is what Ibn Abbas has said, that the Qur'an is four criterions or four types, a type of the Qur'an or a tafsir that is known by everyone. Okay, any, oh, sorry, a tafsir that is known by anyone who knows the Arabic tongue. And then he said there's a tafsir that is not known except by the scholars. And then he said there's a tafsir that no one is excused for not knowing. This, basic, this third thing, a tafsir that nobody is excused for not knowing, it's uh, verses like Aqimu salah no Muslim can say, no, I don't know that prayer is obligatory. For example, or for example, 
فعلم انه لا اله الا الله. No Muslim can say I do not understand what لا اله الا الله. How did he become a Muslim in the first place? He does not understand لا اله الا الله. So some verses no one has an excuse for not knowing. But then he said, obviously the verses where he said nobody will know except those who are scholars of Islam, uh, th those that, you know, verses that need you to understand the sunnah and deep understanding of the Quran and sunnah to understand these verses. But then he said there's a fourth part that verses or there's an interpretation, a tafsir that is not known except by Allah. And whoever claims, he said this, and whoever claims that he knows it is a liar. This is where people misunderstand this. Ibn Abbas does not mean that there's a verse of the Quran that is not understood by anyone. That is impossible. Why is that? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Quran. How can Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala command you to ponder on the Quran and there are verses that will not be known? Impossible. There is no verse in the Quran that is not understood by anyone except Allah. There is no. Then what does Ibn Abbas mean when he said that there's some verses that are not understood? He means matters of the world of the unseen. Matters of the world of the unseen. Nobody knows exactly how it is except Allah. For example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about things in paradise. Okay, we have a, you know, some understanding. We understand the literal meaning, but the reality of it, Allahu a'lam. We didn't see it. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about some of this creation, the kursi, we know the description of it, but the reality of it, Allahu a'lam. We don't know, we didn't see it. This is what it means. So we have an understanding, but the reality of it, Allah alam. And when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about some of his attributes, like what we will have in this chapter, what we, khalas, whatever is attributed to Allah, we affirm it to Allah. But how it is, Allahu alam. This is what is meant, that some things are not understood by anyone except Allah. Because it's part of the world of the unseen. Nobody has seen it except Allah, or nobody, Allah, nobody knows of it, how, how it is it exactly except Allah. So this is the fourth part. So there's no verse in the Quran that is not understood by anyone except Allah. No verse. Now we go back to Noon. First of all, is Noon a word or a letter? It's a letter, yeah? You don't have, there's no guessing. It's a letter, it's written, it's a letter, it's Noon, yeah? It's not noon, wow, noon, it's noon. Noon is a letter. In Arabic, do you ask meanings of letters? Aslan, letters, we do not ask what is the meaning of this letter. That is why nobody asked. You will find some, you know, some statements of the, some companions, some tabi'een, they will say noon, uh, part of the word of this. It's just sayings, you know, they mean it's just like some of our scholars have said, these are letters that are used in general. This, these letters have no meanings. It's a letter. You cannot ask what is the meaning of this letter. It's a letter. So what he said that companions, and he, it was an issue for him. He said, how, how can we say that's something that is not understood? And yet the companions, they recited and they didn't ask. So because the companions, they understood these are letters, we don't need to ask what is the meaning of this letter. But what you can ask is, what is the wisdom of having these letters at the start of chapters. This is what you can ask. Yani, subhanAllah, we have some chapters that don't start with letters. We have some chapters that start with letters. What is the wisdom? Huh. Okay, here scholars have talked and they've said, Sheikh Salam Taymiyyah and many of the scholars, subhanAllah, linguistics and big, uh, big, big scholars, they said that, well, the hikmah, the wisdom of having these letters and the start of chapters is to affirm and to remind the reader of the challenge. Which challenge? The challenge that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has challenged mankind. What challenge am I talking about? What was the main challenge that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala challenged mankind in the Quran? Regarding Islam, yeah. Get something similar to the Quran. Yeah, bring some, come up with something similar to the Quran. So what happened is that the disbelievers, the Kuffar Quraysh, they are the pure Arab. So Allah, so they said, no, Muhammad came up with it, made it up. Allah said, ha, khalas, fa'atu bi ashri suwari mithlihi muftariyat. Khalas, come up with 10 chapters, similar to it, made up. Just like Muhammad made it up, okay, khalas, make up something. You, you guys have the same tongue, okay, khalas, come up with something similar. Nobody tried. Obviously, it started with come up with a similar Quran. And then the challenge was reduced, come up with 10 chapters. And then the challenge was reduced, come up with one chapter. And one chapter is not Surah Al-Baqarah. It could be, إِنَّا عَطَيْنَاكَ الْكَوْثَرِ That is one chapter. 
they couldn't come up with one chapter. Why? Because it's, some people might say, well, it's simple, just write words. No, those are true Arab. They tasted the Quran. Even the disbelievers, they understood. They don't, this, they, they're going to make a fool out of themselves if they came up with something. Yani they claim that this is similar to the Quran, yet they know that it's not. So they, they preferred to go to war. And subhanAllah, to do all these extreme things rather than just come up with something similar, khalas. They couldn't. And the only person that tried had made a fool out of himself. Who is he? Musaylama? Musaylama? What? what you, you, don't, you don't say, when you hear, when, you say, when people talk about him, what do they say? They say, Musaylama? Al Kadhab. Al Kadhab. Musaylama? Al Kadhab. Khalas, he's known. Musaylama? Al Kadhab. The liar. Because he could not. He came up with something very ridiculous. Even when you hear it, you say, well, is this a joke? Yani, that's why nobody was able. And these letters, the scholars said, it's a reminder that this Quran is made up of these letters that you use in your everyday life. Yet you were unable to come up with something similar to this Quran. So these letters are a reminder of the challenge. So these letters are a reminder of the challenge. So if someone asks you, what does noon mean? You say, well, letters, we don't ask the meanings of letters. So we say, okay, then what do you say? We say, what's the wisdom behind these letters? We say, okay, the wisdom behind these letters is a reminder of the challenge where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala challenged mankind to come up with something similar to the Quran. Understood? Okay, good. So if someone says, what does qaf mean? If somebody says, what does, what does qaf mean? Huh? No meaning for the letter. Okay, no meaning for the letter. Say, okay, then what, what do we say then? And you say, well, why is it in the start of the chapter? Okay, it reminds them of the challenge. To remind of the challenge. Yeah, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala challenged. Good. Noon wal qalani wa ma Allah azza wa swears by the pen. Again, this is a general. Wal qalani wa ma So they say this is, as Ibn Kathir has mentioned, it's to remind people of this favor that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has bestowed on his, on his servants, is he gave them the ability to write. Yeah? And وَمَا يَسْطُرُونَ Everything that is written. Some, some of them might say, Al-Qalam here is the Qalam, the first, uh, the Qalam that wrote all that is going to be decreed. Yeah, this is a Qalam just like any other Qalam. So any other pen. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala swore by the pen in general, not any specific pen. Okay? وَمَا يَسْطُرُونَ And what they inscribe. So Allah swears by all pens and what is written. Just as a reminder, Allah swears that He subhanahu wa ta'ala has bestowed this favor on us, teaching us how to write and all this. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ma anta bi ni'mati rabbika bi majnoon. Okay, you are not, as they have mentioned, you're a madman. Wa inna laka wa ma anta bi ni'mati Wa inna laka la ajran ghayra mamnoon. Wa inna ka la ala khuluqin azim. Okay. Wa inna laka la ajran ghayra mamnoon. Ghayra mamnoon. What is غير ممنون? Un un uninterrupted. We was there a verse? Okay, okay. Can you anyone remember a verse that we covered that says أجر غير ممنون? Suratin. What is the verse? فله أجر غير ممنون. Yeah, a reward, an uninterrupted reward. We said, how is how is paradise an uninterrupted reward? An interrupted reward is paradise, yeah? How is paradise an uninterrupted reward? In what sense? Okay, it's endless. What else? Okay, meaning? Will there be any pauses in them enjoying themselves? But in this dunya, what's the difference here? Uninterrupted. Huh? There's no death? Okay, look at the simpler things. You get sick. If you get sick, can you enjoy the things around you? Do they get sick in paradise? No. Okay, when you go to the toilet, it interrupts. Do they go to the toilet in paradise? No. Ajr ghair mamnoon. Their reward in paradise, all their enjoyment is uninterrupted. Okay, this is the meaning, uninterrupted. Okay, wa inna laka la ajran ghair mamnoon wa inna ka la ala khuluqin azim. Okay. وَإِنَّكَ لَعَلَى says to show the level okay, of 
moral character the Prophet ﷺ has. So, if you want to follow the example of the Prophet Muhammad ﷺ, then know that the Prophet Muhammad ﷺ is of great moral character. So you cannot claim to follow the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad ﷺ, and you're a person who curses all the time, who's very harsh, who nobody can stand you. You cannot sit with a group of people except that they wish that you go away. You're not, definitely there's something wrong with you. Definitely you're not following the sunnah. Why? Because the Prophet ﷺ, Allah, Allah said that, Then the Prophet ﷺ is, he was sent what to complete our moral character. And he was of great moral character. So if you really want to follow the example of the Prophet Muhammad ﷺ, you should definitely have great moral character. And subhanAllah, it never ceases to amaze me that some people, their view of the sunnah is a beard. Or khalas, shortening the garment, khalas, that's sunnah. What about the, the bigger sunnah, which is having great moral character, you know, being good to the people around you, and not being harsh, being gentle, they don't understand this. And people are asking about balance. Balance. They say, how do I balance religion and life? Yeah, follow the example of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu and it is balance. You give your family their time. Okay, you give work the time خلاص, that it needs. You give your neighbors their time. You give everyone their respectable time because this is following the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu And you're patient. What if people harm you? What if people, you know, they mock you? You follow the sunnah again. The sunnah, again, great moral character is not smiling in the face of people. And then whenever they, yani they harm you in a way, you start shouting and cursing and start using, using your hands. And subhanAllah, the Prophet ﷺ never beat, he never rose his hands وسلم, to beat anyone except in jihad. Other than that, he never hit anyone. Not his wives, not his servants, no one. So this is the example of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And what's interesting is Aisha radiallahu anha, when she was asked about the Prophet's moral character, what did she say? The famous words, Kana khuluquhu al-Qur'an. Kana khuluquhu al-Qur'an. You want to ask about his moral character? It is the Qur'an. So it's a walking Qur'an. And some of our scholars said this word, a walking Qur'an, you cannot use it to describe anyone. No one can, should be described as a walking Qur'an except the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Because he's the one who's applying the Qur'an fully. No matter what shaykh you're talking about, no matter how good he is, walking Qur'an or a Qur'an, that's kana khuluqul Qur'an, that's the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Okay, because he was, meaning kana khuluqul Qur'an, every command that you find in the Qur'an, the Prophet Sallallahu obeyed. Any prohibition you find in the Qur'an, the Prophet Sallallahu has acted on that. So, this is the example, the perfect example to follow the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Okay, they claim that the Prophet is a liar, a madman. Okay, sahir. Okay. Fine. There'll come a day, there'll be a day that خلاص. both of you will see. The believers and disbelievers, they'll both witness. The, the truth, okay? فَسَتُبْصِرُوا وَيُبْصِرُونَ بِأَيِّكُمُ الْمَفْتُونَ بِأَيِّكُمُ الْمَفْتُونَ Who of you, who of, who's, who of, which of the two groups knows the one that is a liar, a madman, the one who is struck by the shaitan, afflicted by the devil? بِأَيِّكُمُ الْمَفْتُونَ And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, you don't need that. إِنَّ رَبَّكَ هُوَ أَعْلَمُ بِمَنْ ضَلَّ عَنْ سَبِيلِهِ وَهُوَ أَعْلَمُ بِالْمُهْتَدِينَ End of the day, that is what's important. You don't need any yani, approval from someone to say that, hey, you're on the right path. Regardless, yeah, they say that you're on the wrong path. Let them say whatever they want. Everyone is going to be finding out the reality of this on the day of judgment. But what's important is that Allah knows. And that's sufficient for you. Okay. So if that was the case, that خلاص, Allah knows and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what's important is that Allah knows who's the one who's on the path and who is misguided. Allah, do not obey them. Do not listen to them. Okay? Do not obey the deniers. Okay, they wish that you would uh, compromise 
leave out some of your religion. Yeah? We're in the past chapters, okay, and since the last chapters of Jiza Amma. Okay, mashallah, okay, okay. Kafirun, yeah? How? Okay, worship our, our God for some time and we worship your God. Yeah, one year. Okay, this is, yeah, this is part of, yes. Yes. So in Surah Al Kafirun, there's this meaning that they said that worship our God for one year, and you leave us some of your religion, and then خلاص, we will worship for you one year. But once we said the problem is that once he worships their Lord, خلاص, La ilaha illallah is not there. La ilaha illallah is not there. So what do you do to him? They would love it if you'd leave out some of your religion. So did the Prophet did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say, خلاص, leave out some of your principles and this religion for them to accept? No. He said, فَلَا تُطِعِ الْمُكَذِّبِينَ خلاص, do not, it's not important you need to gain their approval. It's not important that they follow. It's important that they follow the religion as it is. You don't change the religion for the people. Some people say, yeah, you know, but if we leave out this, and we're talking about a big ABC in Islam, big principle, we leave out this, many people will accept. Yeah, you're not commanded to let the, it's not a football team. It's not, you're not commanded, subhanAllah, to change your religion, okay, so that people accept. This religion is preserved. Okay, it came to you preserved, you preserve it for the next generation. This is how it's supposed to be. They accept, they don't accept, they have a problem, they have an issue, that's their problem. Okay, خلاص. But you use hikmah when calling people to this religion, okay? But the actual religion, changing it, no one has the right to. It's not our religion, it's the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَدُّوا لَوْ تُدْهِنُوا فَيُدْهِنُونَ وَلَا تُطِعْ كُلَّ حَلَّافٍ مَهِينَ Okay, now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep describing, will describe yeah, the worst of people. Yeah, these attributes, now these, these are the people described here, are the worst of people. وَلَا تُطِعْ كُلَّ حَلَّافٍ مَهِينٍ حَلَّاف فَعَالٍ A person who keeps on doing halif, yeah? It becomes a habit, a habit swear, it's, it's a habitual swear. He keeps on swearing, it's, it's habits. On any small thing, wallahi la, subhanahu, you don't feel comfortable. If he keeps on swearing on everything, he's lying. I'm surely he's lying. He swears on everything. There's nothing, as if I'm not gonna believe him, unless he uses the name of Allah. First of all, it's like the name of Allah, is it that cheap to you? That you keep using the name of Allah for any small thing? Where's the respect for the name of Allah? The name of Allah should not be used except of something great. And your right will be taken and you fear, خلاص, you have to prove, خلاص, use the name of Allah. Otherwise, yeah, you don't. Because people, what happens that they, they'll, how they act is that it's okay to lie unless you use the name of Allah. A liar is a liar, it's a kabira. If you lie, it's a kabira. You don't need to use the name of Allah to prove your point, okay? I believe you. And many people, they come to say, Wallah, I say, don't, don't, don't say Wallah, I believe you. Did I say you're a liar? I'll take your point, I believe you. Don't, don't start saying, Wallah, Al-Azim, don't, okay? And this person here, they say that even he swears and he lies. And then, okay. Okay, it's like it includes backbiting and includes that person who carries the conversation or carries what he listens from one person to the other to cause mischief, to cause problems. And this is one of the kaba'ar. This is one of the big kaba'ar. The Prophet ﷺ said, لا يدخل الجنة قتات. A qatat, a person who's a qatat who carries, you know, the, what he hears from one person to the other to cause mischief. This is what the Prophet ﷺ said, qatat. He said, a qatat does not enter paradise. A qatat does not enter paradise. Okay, these... Okay, it's an important principle. If you find a hadith that says a person who does this will not enter paradise, a person who does this action will not enter paradise, does that mean that this person is a disbeliever? Think, think. 
He says, La ilaha illallah. He does, but he, he does this action. Does that mean he will be entering hellfire? So it will be forever, then he disbelieves. What did the hadith say? For? So, what, what, so what is this? If it's forever, I didn't say if it's forever. I said the Prophet Sallallahu said, whoever says, La yadkhul jannah, he said, La yadkhul jannah qatta. So if a person does this action, qatta, carries, you know, what he hears to cause mischief, does that mean he's a disbeliever? He will not enter paradise? No. Yeah. La, la. Be careful. As I mentioned, you combine all the texts of the Quran and Sunnah. Okay, we combine all the texts of the Quran and Sunnah. We have also the hadith, Man kana akhiru kalam min al-dunya, la ilaha illallah, dakhal al-jannah. Man qala la ilaha illallah, dakhal al-jannah. So how do you mean? It means that this is a major sin. But that, it does not mean that that person is a kafir. It does not mean that. Okay, a kafir is a person who disbelieves. Khalas, this, the things that the person does to nullify his Islam, they're known. But this, if just the Prophet it does not mean that he's going to be a disbeliever. It means that this is a major sin. End of the day, خلاص, you look at his good deeds and his sins. Just like we took, yeah? If his good deeds were heavier, even if he had some kaba'ir, he'll be entering paradise without any torment, without any punishment, yeah? Okay, Hamazim Masha'im bin Amim. Manna'il lil khayri mu'tadin athim. Okay, Manna'il lil khayr. Preventer of good. This has many meanings. Manna'in lil khair, it could be he has khair, he has يعني, wealth, but he does not give sadaqah, and he prevents other people from giving sadaqah. Manna'in lil khair, mu'tadin athim. Mu'tad, transgressor. Can anyone, uh, all sins are one of two. It's either doing something prohibited, something in itself is haram, or crossing the lines Something any permissible in itself, but if you cross the line in it, it's haram. Okay, manna al khair mu'tadin athim. Utulim ba'da dhalika zanim. Utulim ba'da dhalika zanim. Utul, it's a cruel person, okay? Something that someone who is known for being evil. Zanim, here it's, uh, they used one of the interpretations. But the zanim, they said, from the word zanam, zanama, they said it's, it's like something that stands out. So he's so evil that he stands out from the crowd. He is known for his evilness. He, know, he is very well known that he's an evil person. This is what zanim here means, okay? This is what they wrote here, a legitimate pretender. This is one of the interpretations, but Allah alam, it's a person who is known. They said, in the Arabic language, uh, zanam is where when the camel, half of the ear is cut, it's khalas, it becomes a sign. It stands out from the crowd, from the rest of the camels. So they also use it for, uh, for example, a sheep who has two things standing out here. The neck, they said this is a zanam because it's, it's, it stands out from the rest of the crowd. So as a name here is someone who stands out from the people because of how evil he is. Okay, now all of this evil, all of these bad things about him, so he justified all this because of his wealth and because of you know, what he, how, what, how much he had of children. So this is what, how he justified. And of the day, who gave him this wealth and children? Who gave him this? Allah. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِذَا تُتْلَى عَلَيْهِ آيَاتُنَا قَالْ أَسَاطِيرُ الْأَوَّلِينَ yeah, The biggest of these mistakes is disbelief. When the verses are recited, he said, no, these are stories of the past. Stories of the past, yeah, this is pure disbelief. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, سَنَسِيمُهُ عَلَى الْخُرْطُومِ We will brand him upon this snout. Khurtum is the nose. But سَنَسِيمُهُ it could have two meanings, and both of them are correct. In this dunya, it will be a clear sign for the people that that man is an evil man, a bad man. Sanasimu al khurtum, it will be evident for the people just like a mark on the nose. And the other meaning, as some of the scholars said, no, on the hereafter, you know, he'll be burnt on the nose. So it'll be like a sign. Al Tabari said both are correct. In the dunya, he will stand out as an evil man. 
And in the Akhirah, he'll be tormented and he'll be, stand, and he'll be, he'll be given this mark. Okay? So this is how we combine all these opinions. So Sanasimu al khurtum has two meanings. One meaning is that all of these bad things that were described here, it will be a mark for him in this dunya that he's a bad man. So end of the day, if you see these things in a person, you know, this is a bad sign. A person who swears a lot, a person who is, you know, his evil himself. This, these are all bad signs. Yeah. And here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala combined all of these things that usually this is the worst of people. This is the worst of people who has all of these things combined in him. So let's say Mu'afatun, we said two meanings, one in the dunya and one in the akhirah. And the dunya, it will be like a mark on his face that he's an evil man. And in the akhirah, he'll be marked on his face, he'll be burnt on his nose. Khurtum is the nose. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here talks about a story of some of the past nations. And then he says, Inna balawnahum, referring to who? We have tried them. The people of Quraysh, as Ibn Kathir has said, Inna balawnahum, we have tried them. Kama balawna ashab al jannah. Okay, so what's common here is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has tried and he tested Quraysh just like he tested this group of people. Okay, with what? I mean, the story of this is that this group of people, these brothers or this group of people, they had something of this dunya which is a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they had rights that they had to do. Of these rights, giving the poor. So, what happened is that, as we will come to see, that they prevented the right, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tormented them by taking this favor away from them. The people of Quraysh, their gift is that the Prophet ﷺ was one of them. And how do they thank this blessing? By believing. And not becoming enemies. And they know that this is the truth from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because there's nothing, as we will come to see in the chapter, there is nothing to prevent them from believing. They just follow their desires and they disbelieved. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, we tested them, Quraysh, just like we tested this group of people. So what happened? What is the story here? So the companions of the garden, okay, what happens is that they swore to cut its fruit in the early morning to prevent the poor people from eating. So they used to give the poor people a portion, but now they said, you know what? If we keep it to ourselves, we will get more. Khalas, you know what? Let's do this. Let's prevent. Let's take all the fruit. Khalas, and the people, the poor people will come, the needy, they won't, won't find anything. And that's it. It's all for us. And they're the owners of the garden. Before that, they used to give the needy people. They used to give a portion of it to the needy people, okay? Let's go over the story. What happened is that فطاف عليها الطائف من ربك وهم نائمون. So they said strong winds or cold wind, okay, came across this garden and left it out خلاص, without any use. يعني all the good that was there خلاص, left. It's destroyed. فأصبحت كالصرين. Okay, so this is what happened. So they had the intention that tomorrow, خلاص, we'll cut the fruit from the, and we'll prevent the poor from eating. So what happened? When they slept, they didn't know that they're dealing with Allah. Allah Azza Jal wanted to teach them a lesson. They came, what happens is that a strong wind came and destroyed the fruit and destroyed the garden, Aslan. Okay. And now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us their story. Now they don't know that this happened to the garden. They're going to the garden thinking that خلاص, we're going to be doing this. And Allah describes how they walked and what they said. فَتَنَادَوا مُصْبِحِينَ They called one another at morning. أَنِغْدُوا عَلَىٰ حَرْثِكُمْ إِنْ كُنْتُمْ صَارِمِينَ Go early to your crop. Sarimin from to cut the fruit, yeah. فَانْطَلَقُوا هُمْ يَتَخَافِتُ Whispering to each other. أَلَّا يَدْخُلَنَّهَا الْيَوْمَ عَلَيْكُمْ مِسْكِينَ Okay. No needy, no poor person will enter today to benefit, to eat from it. خلاص. They'll be cutting all the fruit from themselves. Their intention was خلاص. They're determined. Their intention was there and they acted on the intention. It's not just a mere intention now. It's an intention and they acted on the intention. They're going to cut the fruit to prevent the poor from eating. Okay. 
فلما اوكي okay, they reached the garden فلما رأوها قالوا إنا لضالون so they entered they said maybe we're lost that's maybe that's not the right car maybe we took a wrong turn and to that extent they couldn't recognize their garden anymore you can imagine going to a place خلاص you go there every day suddenly you go to the, you look at the place and, maybe I took a wrong turn it can't be this can't be the same garden and to that extent it's destroyed to that extent they could not recognize their garden and then when it hit them ah no something happened we were deprived it was destroyed something prevented us something took us they know it's from Allah the reality of it no this is our garden. We're not lost, but something happened. Awsatuhum here, it's not the most, they said the most moderate. In reality, awsat, here the word qala awsatuhum. Awsat doesn't mean middle. Awsat means the best. Ummatan wasata, it's from just, best nation. Wasat doesn't just mean middle. Middle between two things. That doesn't just mean this. Wasat is the best of things. So the best one of them, he said, أَلَمْ أَقُلْ لَكُمْ لَوْ لَا تُسَبِّحُونَ And did I not say to you, did I not remind you until that this is wrong? Okay. لَوْ لَا تُسَبِّحُونَ Exalting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So then they started saying, يعني, خلاص, it's too late. The torment is, has held and they got their, this يعني, blessing from Allah, this favor was taken away. So he said, خلاص, exalted is our Lord. We were wrongdoers. Okay. Then now they started saying to each other, يعني, خلاص, blaming each other. يعني, wish, we wish that we didn't do this and started thinking يعني, what we did was wrong, you know, preventing those poor people. يعني, maybe the blessing of this garden was because of these poor people. They were going to come to this point. Okay, transgressors. Here, again. Here they transgressed that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given them this wealth. Okay? And maybe a part of this wealth was an obligation to give the poor. Here they stopped. Or get, here they stopped. They say, no, maybe we gave in the past, but now we don't want to give. Here they cross the line. This is an example of crossing the line. Here they cross the line. Yeah. And Allah described them as being one. What? They, they describe themselves. They said, Taghin. Cross the bond. Min Taghiyan. Cross the boundaries. Yeah. And then they said, Khalas. Once they lost this, they say, Asa Rabbuna yubdilana khayran minha inna ila Rabbina raghibun. Khalas. We will. They lost this dunya. And their desires became attached to the hereafter. Inna ila Rabbina raghibun. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Before this. So these people, they had this garden that they used to eat. And alhamdulillah, it's part of their wealth. And they used to give the poor. So according to this dunya and how people think is that, well, if I give less to the poor, I will have more. The same thing if a person used to give sadaqah. Or used to give, يعني, he used to help his parents or, help, or he helps part of his family. And that person, يعني, maybe for this time he cannot work, and he used to help him with small amount. He does not know that because of this amount that he's helping, Allah Azza wa is blessing his wealth. He's giving him health. He's giving him good things. You cannot see the relation. But it is, something is happening from Allah. You are getting something from Allah. You're not seeing it. It, 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 it might not be clear. But you are getting something from Allah. Khalas. Huh? Yes, 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 exactly. It could not be any wealth. It could be health that you're getting, barakah in general. That's why some people, subhanAllah, yani they have um, yani old parents that they cannot yani do anything, so he's providing for them and they're part of the family, sometimes the wife might complain. This is theoretical, of course, no wife complains. Inshallah, no wife complains. That, خلاص, يعني you're just taking care of your parents. So, 
he doesn't know that the good things that happen in that family is because of this blessing. Yeah? Because the good things that happen is because of this blessing. And I remember, subhanAllah, yani the, one of the most blessed periods of time that we had in our house, no problems, everything was good. When our grandmother used to live with us and she was too old and she lost her memory and my father used to take care of her. And sometimes she doesn't recognize anyone. When she sees me, she covers up. Subhanallah, she's my grandmother, but she doesn't recognize anyone. She thinks I'm a stranger. So it's, it was sometimes difficult, but it was a blessing in the home. Yani. We had a very good time, even though we were living in a very small home and we had some difficulties, but when my grandmother was with us and my father used to take care of her, it was a blessing in the home, subhanAllah. Once she died, things changed. Even though we had more wealth, we had a bigger home, but subhanAllah, we feel that the blessing is not there. We, we can tell that something is different. And many people, they have their, every single one of you, he has his own story. Sometimes it could be uh, someone who's dependent on you. It could be your brother who's living in another country. He's dependent on you now. He has no job or he has going, he's going through some difficulties. And you're, you know, part of your salary or you're giving him something, small amount you need to help him. Don't think that maybe shaitan will come to you and say, you know what, if you do not help your brother, you can accumulate a lot of money. This is part of shaitan. Because the shaitan doesn't tell you about the blessing. What about the blessing? If you stop giving him, your blessing will decrease. So the more, it's not about how much you have. It's how blessed your wealth is. It's how blessed your health is. Some people, subhanAllah, they have, yani, normal, their wealth yani, is limited. But alhamdulillah, look at their health. They don't suffer from any of these diseases that many of the people suffer. Look at their, alhamdulillah, their, their spouses, their partners, they have a good relationship, alhamdulillah. They don't complain about anything. We know people who are filthy, who are really wealthy. Yet they complain about their children. They complain about, mashallah, but you look at their wealth. Yeah, and it's like if you put the wealth in the fire, the fire will be turned out before hatta their wealth decreases. Mashallah, they have a lot of wealth, but they have a lot of problems. So you're asking the barakah. You want the barakah, the blessings. So if you give, if you're helping someone with your wealth, you will get the blessing. Don't, never think that, yeah, if I didn't help him, I could have gotten yeah, much more. I could have at least saved over time. I could have got, no, it doesn't work this way. It doesn't work. End of the day, it's Allah. Maybe if you stopped yourself, if you stopped from helping, Allah might take it away. Especially those who do not give zakah. We have limits. There's an obligatory part, which is giving zakah. And there's a preferred thing, which is helping you know, those who are needy, those who are related to you, this is preferred. It's not wajib. But if you do, you'll get a lot of reward. But stopping zakah? No. Here is khalas. You, yani you're under risk of losing your wealth, aslan. And we know many stories of, you know, uh, businesses yani, uh, getting, being bankrupt because of not giving zakah. A lot of stories, subhanAllah. So here Allah Azza wa Jal gave this example. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أَكْبَرْ لَوْ كَانُوا يَعْلَمُونَ So, such is the punishment of this world. Many take, take this as a lesson, okay? If you stop obeying Allah, you're under risk of the punishment of Allah. And the punishment could not be something physical. It could be something, يعني, the barakah is not there. You start getting all kinds of problems, yeah? So this is a punishment, but the real punishment, yani having this punishment in the dunya and then repenting, that is something good. If someone said, Khalas, yakhi, I was punished in this dunya, it's a bad sign. Well, if you repent, it's something good. If you repent, if you go back to Allah, then what happened to you was good. It was something good and it, it turned out to be good for you. This is the true punishment. Okay, what about the righteous people? Inna lil muttaqina inda rabbihim jannatin na'im. Indeed, for the righteous, their Lord are the gardens of pleasure. And then, look at this. Afa naj'alu muslimina kal mujrimin. Ma lakum kayfa tahkumun. And will Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala treat the believers just like he treats the disbelievers? Not just in akhirah, but also in dunya. You know, people come and say, Akhi, MashaAllah, he prays all the time, he fasts, but look, he has nothing. 
look at his neighbor. He doesn't pray. He prays once every month. And look at how many cars he has. It's not about this. It's not about this, yaqi. It's as if, who is he worshiping? He's worshiping Allah. You don't know this is better for him. This is better for him. Yani if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, maybe if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala opened the doors of wealth for that person, maybe it will, he would lost the akhirah. So this is something good. If, he, if in this dunya you're doing everything yani in your power to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whatever you have of wealth, you're spending for the sake of Allah, and you're going straight for the akhirah, this is your main concern, the akhirah, then this is something good for you. Alhamdulillah, this is something great. أَفَنَجْعَلُ مُسْلِمِينَ كَالْمُجْرِمِينَ and people sometimes they complain. They say, Ani, they say, yeah, we pray and we're Muslims, but subhanAllah, I lost my job and this. He, the most obvious thing, say, did you do dua? Did you ask Allah? Say, yes, yes. Once, just once, he did dua. Okay, subhanAllah. And is this your opinion of Allah? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives those who disbelieve. Those who disbelieve, they mock Allah, they mock the messenger. Yes, yet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives them in the dunya. They have health. And they give them, he gives them wealth, he provides. So what about you, Muslim? Why don't you go and seek this from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? It's not that Allah's provision is limited. Maybe that Allah, Allah, maybe it's good for you to make dua. Rizq will come, provision will come. أَفَنَجْعَلُوا مُسْلِمِينَ كَالْمُجْرِمِينَ مَا لَكُمْ كَيْفَ تَحْكُمُونَ And by the way, end of the day, the believer in his life, no matter how he's living, there is tranquility. He finds, alhamdulillah, he's calm. He finds raha. He's, he finds rest in this dunya. The disbeliever might be having all the wealth, yet once he comes to sleep, he cannot sleep because of the problems. He does not have a purpose. He says, he wakes up in the morning, why should I wake up? What, what will today change? It's the same cycle. What am I living for? He gets bored, even though he has all the wealth that you can imagine. He does everything that he wants. Still, there's no higher cause. He said, why should I wake up every day aslan? Ya khi, leaving this life is better. This is what they say. I'm a Muslim, no, every day, no matter how poor he is, they say, alhamdulillah, every day, this is the day that will bring me closer to Allah. And I'm going to be leaving this dunya soon. So every day is a good day. Every day is, ah, today is my opportunity to do more good deeds, to become closer to Allah, to have a higher level in paradise. He has a good opinion of Allah, and he's very optimistic. He's sick. Alhamdulillah, Ya Allah, it's a hard time, but I will be rewarded for this. Anything that happens to him, he relates it to the Akhirah. Isn't he, subhanAllah, who's happy? He's happier, he's much more happier. No matter how much he has, no matter what he's going through, he's always happy, he's always content. Okay. أَفَنَجْعَلُ الْمُسْلِمِينَ كَالْمُجْمَا لَكُمْ كَيْفَ تَحْكُمُونَ so what's, what's stopping you from believing? Do you have a scripture from the from you know, something from Allah from the messengers that claims what you want, what you desire? In it, and you, what, what you desire is in it. Or do you have an oath? Did we promise you something? Yani people act as if the akhirah is for them. They disbelieve and they act in a way as if the akhirah is for them, guaranteed. So Allah is saying, do you have a scripture, something from, something that was revealed to you that you will be having this hereafter for you, whatever you claim will be for you? Or did we, did we give you any promises? End of the day, no, because they're not following the messenger. Ask them, which of them is responsible for this claim? Okay, now. Or do you have partners? Do you have partners? Do they have partners with Allah? Do they have idols or things, gods that they worship that gave them promises? That will protect them. Let them come with these partners. So end of the day, no matter what they believe in, no matter yani what, what is it that they're depending on, 
in the hereafter, it will be clear that nothing, no one will have يعني, a way in the hereafter except those who followed the messengers. And here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions something. يَوْمَ يُكْشَفُ عَنْ سَاقٍ وَيُدْعَوْنَ إِلَى السُّجُودِ فَلَا يَسْتَطِعُونَ What does it mean? يَوْمَ يُكْشَفُ عَنْ سَاقٍ يَوْمَ يُكْشَفُ عَنْ سَاقٍ This is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about the hereafter, okay? يَوْمَ يُكْشَفُ عَنْ سَاقٍ Saq in Arabic it has two meanings. It means shin. Shin, okay? يَوْمَ يُكْشَفُ عَنْ سَاقٍ وَيُدْعَوْنَ إِلَى السُّجُودِ But يُكْشَفُ عَنْ سَاق The literal meanings is when the calamity starts. This is the literal meanings. When a calamity starts. If you look at what the early some of the scholars what they said of course how do we do tafsir of the Quran here there's an important matter when you have a verse of the Quran here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says yawma yukshafu an saq if you had no knowledge of the sunnah no knowledge of yeah no knowledge of the sunnah basically here and you only have the Arabic language you would say yawma yukshafu an saq this, when the shin is uncovered, in this context, it means when the calamity starts. Or when the calamity reaches its, يعني خلاص, its height. يَوْمَ يُكْشَفُ عَنْ سَاقٍ وَيُدْعَوْنَ إِلَى السُّجُودِ فَلَا يَسْتَطِعُونَ When is that event? When they will be commanded to prostrate. But when you go back to the sunnah, there is a hadith that mentions something. The Prophet ﷺ says, on the day of judgment, Allah will uncover his shin the shin of Allah it will be uncovered and every Muslim will lay down in prostration will be asked to do sujood everyone will be doing sujood except hypocrites those who used to do sujood in the dunya not for the sake of Allah or they were showing off these people will not they want to do sujood that their backs will go back again as one plate they will not be able to to do sujood as one piece so here the Prophet ﷺ mentioned this hadith. He did not mention this verse. He mentioned this hadith. So now we do tafsir with the sunnah. Tafsir nabawi. We use the sunnah to translate, to interpret this verse. So yawma yukshafu an saq. We use the sunnah. It is the shin of Allah will be uncovered and it will be assigned for the believers to do sujood. So the meaning here of this verse is that on the day of judgment, Allah subhanahu they'll be assigned for the believers. Allah will uncover his shin and people, Muslims, will be asked to do sujood. Now, there's an important principle regarding the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yadullah. Here, mathalan, saq. Yakshiv an saqih. Whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala attributes to himself, we affirm it. We say, khalas. Yadullah, yadullah. We believe yadullah. Here, what are we not allowed to say? We're not allowed to say how, kaif. In Bab, they say Bab al-Asma wa sifat we do not ask how. Allah's names and attributes, we do not ask how. Yadullah, the hand of Allah, we affirm, khalas, Allah Azza wa Jal described, attributed to himself a hand, we say, khalas, yadullah, we believe in it, yadullah. How? We say we're not allowed to ask how, because no matter how we think, Allah Azza wa Jal is not like that. Allah Azza wa Jalla is not like that. So خلاص, we believe in this and we say خلاص, Allah Azza wa Jalla affirmed the hand. We understand what a hand is. We don't say we don't know what a hand is. We know what a hand is. But to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is part of mutashabih kulli. The reality of it, Allahu alam. Even the angels don't know. Allahu alam. But do we say does Allah has a hand? Does he have a hand? Yes, he has a hand. Does he have a shin from the sunnah? Yes. We affirm this is part of believing what the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said. How? We say, yeah, we do not ask how. Just like in Bab al-Qadr, matters of decree, in faith, we do not ask why. You never say, why did Allah give him and prevent that person? Why did Allah make this person rich and that person poor? We never, we're not allowed to ask why. لا يسأل عما يفعل وهم يسألون. Allah has never asked why. Who judges Allah? Servants, creatures judge Allah. Nobody judges Allah. That's why in parts of matters of faith, we do not ask why. In matters of names and attributes, we do not ask how. Is this clear? Okay. 
So Yom Ayyukshaf Ansaq, they will be assigned in the hereafter, Allah will uncover his chin, everyone who used to worship Allah in this dunya will lay down prostration, except those who showed off, the hypocrites. They won't be allowed. فَلَا يَسْتَطِيعُونَ Okay. خَاشِعَةً أَبْصَارُهُمْ تَرْحَقُهُمْ ذِلَّهُ وَقَدْ كَانُوا يُدْعَوْنَ إِلَى السُّجُودِ وَهُمْ سَالِمُونَ Okay, in that day, they'll be humbled, they'll be in, subhanAllah, يعني in a very bad situation, and Allah is saying they were commanded to do this sujood in this dunya, but they refused to do so. So here in the dunya, subhanAllah, we're commanded to worship Allah, to do sujood, do it willingly now, so that you will be able to do it in the hereafter. Those who refuse to do sujood here, they will not be allowed to do sujood in the hereafter for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. خَاشِعَةً أَبْصَرْ تَرْحَقُمْ دِلَّ وَقَدْ كَانُوا يُدْعَوْنَ إِلَى السُّجُودِ وَهُمْ سَالِمُونَ Okay. فَذَرْنِي وَمَنْ يُكَذِّبُ بِهَذَا الْحَدِيثِ سَنَسْتَدْرِجُوا مِنْ حَيْثُ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ Okay, very scary verse here. فَذَرْنِي وَمَنْ يُكَذِّبُ بِهَذَا الْحَدِيثِ Those who deny, هذا الحديث is the Qur'an, okay? So those who deny the Qur'an, they disbelieve in this religion in general, and they mock, and they refuse by themselves, it's not that they didn't have proofs, they refuse to believe, those people, Allah will deal with them. Some people. So those who refuse, Allah will deal with them. Now here people might think, this verse, سَنَسْتَدْرِجُهُ مِنْ حَيْثُ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ They might think that سَنَسْتَدْرِجْ استدراج, Allah will lead them, it means that He will punish them. You know the worst punishment is not you know, something that will fall from the heavens. The worst punishment is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala opening the dunya for you and leading you away from akhirah. Because Allah does not want you. And خلاص, if Allah leads you to that, to, if he sanastadrijuhum, here the word istidraj, usually it means it leads, leading them to punishment. Leading them to punishment, meaning خلاص, opening the dunya for him and taking the religion away from his heart. خلاص, he has no concern. He does not even think about the akhirah. His main concern is the dunya. He left Aslan thinking about the hereafter. Some, he had some, there was an opportunity, but he left it, he denied, he disbelieved. As a punishment, this happened. Okay. This is subhanAllah, Allah's plan. And I will give them time, indeed my plan is firm. Yani Allah Azza wa does not, as soon as a person displeases, he knows you don't find a, you know, a cloud coming and then he's struck by a lightning. No. Allah has a plan for everything. He has his test, subhanahu wa his hakim, his wise. Even those who disbelieve, he still gave them time. To become worse off, or maybe they come back. We don't know. Either they become, they do more sins and they become worse off, so they end up getting a bigger punishment, or they might come back. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives them time. وَأُمْلِي لَهُمْ إِنَّ كَيْدِي مَتِينَ And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, so what is preventing them from believing? Are you asking, you know, for a payment for this religion? No, it's free. أَمْ تَسْأَلُهُمْ أَجْرًا فَهُمْ مِنْ مَغْرًا مُتْقَلُونَ أَمْ عِنْدَهُمُ الْغَيْبِ فَهُمْ يَكْتُبُونَ Or do they know the world of the unseen, that this is not true? And they write it down? No. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَاصْبِرْ لِحُكْمِ رَبِّكْ Okay, let's be patient. Till Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decrees something. فَاصْبِرْ بِحُكْمِ رَبِّكْ وَلَا تَكُنْ كَصَاحِبِ الْحُوتِ إِذْ نَادَى وَهُوَ مَكْضُونَ Who is Sahib al-Hut? Yeah, give them an opportunity, especially the young shoe. Who is Sahib al-Hut? Come on, you don't know? You, you answered all the difficult questions. You don't have an answer for this? Who was swollen, who was swallowed, swallowed by fish or a whale or what do you say Yunus yes correct yeah. okay this is Yunus Allah Azza wa Jalla he's talking about Yunus Sahib al-Hut is Yunus alayhi salam Sahib al-Hut Yunus al-Hut here it's a fish so you know that Yunus was swallowed by a fish we don't specify a specific it's a fish Okay, was swallowed by a fish, was Yunus alayhi salam. إِذْ نَادَى وَهُوَ مَكْضُومُ When he called Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, at this time of distress, deep in the sea, in the 
subhanAllah, stomach of the fish, he called to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What did he say? He repented to Allah, exalting him subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is something very important. When you find Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioning the repentance of their messengers, it's not something bad. Some people don't understand this. It's not something bad. It's not that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking or is showing that this message. No, this messenger, when he repented, repentance is an act of worship. When Adam repented, فَاسْطَفَى فَاجْتَبَى Meaning he became even better in position because of that repentance, especially a repentance of a prophet. It's not like a repentance of a normal person, which is incomplete. A true, complete repentance that even raises him levels and levels. He's a much better prophet or messenger after this repentance. And repentance doesn't mean he was a criminal before that. Again, another mistake. People think that no one repents except a criminal who does crimes. Oh, I'll do toba. Why? Because I've done so many bad things. Subhanallah. Only those who do bad things repent. Repentance is an act of worship in itself because you're going back to Allah to correct yourself. Sometimes I mean, people, they're engaging in worship, but they feel that what they're doing is not enough, so they repent to Allah. Repent, saying that, Ya Allah, I mean, I've done, I'm lacking, so I want to repent, go back to you to do more good. So Allah then, subhanahu wa the favor of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which he saved him from the whale. If it wasn't the favor of Allah, he would have stayed there. Yeah? I've been thrown into the naked shore while he was okay, madhmum. But that did not happen. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose him and made him of the righteous. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِيَّكَادُ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا لَيُزْلِقُونَكَ بِأَبْصَارِهِمْ لَمَّا سَمْعُوا الذِّكْرِ لَيُزْلِقُونَكَ Here, Ibn Kathir, لَيُزْلِقُونَكَ It's like they envy you. They wish, to, يعني, they wish for your death because of how much they envy him. Hasad, with their eyes. And here Ibn Kathir said, this is something very important. Because we know that hasad is something dangerous and it affects. So the Ibn Kathir is saying here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala clearly said that even hasad does not work except with the will of Allah. So here, who protected the Prophet Allah. So for those people who complain about hasad, ain and witchcraft, subhanAllah, the second that this happens, they forget that they're Muslims, they forget the person that they call on to. If Allah protects you against this, no one can harm you. So the, yani the solution is not to give up in yourself. Yani you're submitting yourself to the shaitan. You don't give up. You fight with dhikr and with worship. You go back to Allah and seek Allah's aid. And Allah will aid you. Once if Allah decreed this, خلاص, no one can harm you. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَا هُوَ إِلَّا ذِكْرٌ لِلْعَالَمِينَ It's not except a reminder to the world. So for problems, witchcraft, hasad, and usually it's the woman, yeah, subhanAllah, our sisters, and may Allah guide them, many of them, as soon as they see something small happening in their lives, and I started, some of them say, I started forgetting some verses of the Quran. Uh, I lost the, what's it called, the knife. I, re I don't remember. It's hasad, it's ain, it's witchcraft. Small things, small things. Directly they start, you know, saying maybe it's my neighbor and maybe... Relax. Sometimes people just get worked up for nothing. Okay, and sometimes even if it was, end of the day, if it was or it wasn't, you go back to Allah. No one, can, no sheikh can help you. It's not magic. No sheikh, can, no sheikh can do something. You go back to Allah. Do what everyone else does. Okay, if there's something yeah, you, you see that you can do, yes, otherwise you go back to Allah, you repent, and you start going heavy on dhikr and on reciting Quran, protecting yourself in general. Because end of the day, no one can help you except Allah. The same thing with any other problem. Okay, with this, inshallah, we'll finish. We'll stop and we'll continue next week, inshallah.